Hi everybody, I hope you've been doing well. Um, I thought before I started posting the videos I have for, that I have or have planned for the flying ointments and um, further discussion on psychedelics and all that, um, I thought it would be best if I did uh, what I hope will be brief introduction video for that What's, I'm going to put it all together in a playlist when they're all, or as I, as I post them. Um, but I could just post them, but I thought it would be best to share uh, so a little bit of my experience and my perspective on this topic before we get off into it. Um, so, I don't have this planned at all, so let me think. Um, First, let me say that, of course, I don't have an idea of anybody's experience level out there, so I'm going to be very honest about my experience level with things, and I want you to feel free to ask me any questions that you may have, and feel free to share or recommend resources as I post the videos. There will be certain channels I'll recommend because I know they specialize in different things or uh, maybe other blogs I could recommend. Um, but of course we are talking about mind-altering substances and whenever you're um, using anything at all that could uh, affect the biochemistry that you have naturally, you want to be cautious with that. That's with, that's with anything. I think a lot of people don't realize that about prescriptions, that they need to do their research on that too. You can't just take, even a doctor, you can't always just trust that they are going to know your body as well as you will know your body. And myself, I, I, I'm fairly well experienced enough in life to know what I can and can't handle as far as anything that's going to alter my mood or my psyche and I have things I have not tried that I may try in the future um, like once the twins are grown and out of the house and I'm free to go play with other adults again and do what I want to do um, there are some experiences that I may choose to have in the future most of my experiences with um, psychedelics that are stronger came between the ages of say 15 and 19. Uh, after that point I got more settled down with my life and gave up that whole you know rocker chick lifestyle and settled down and went back to school and had my kids and so I didn't do that uh, stuff when I was raising my children. I do have currently um, a flying ointment that I've, one or two flying ointments that I've made myself. Well, not ointments, oils. I have not made any ointments. I have, I think, maybe three different flying ointments from Sarah Lawless, I believe is her name. And I'll be uh, sharing these things as we get into more specifics, like mugwort, mugwort versus henbane versus um, DMT and uh, mushrooms and all these uh, various ways and forms that people have tried and worked with um, to fly, essentially, because what you're doing is altering your normal state of consciousness and it's like unlocking doors that's my overall experience I've never had a negative experience and that's because I am a cautious person as far as uh, who I will have around me and uh, the environment that I would be in and um, I make sure that I have uh, what I need set aside so it's not a problem um, but of course, it all, a lot of this has to do with your personal frame of mind. If you are going through any kind of uh, serious depression, um, if you are 
an anxious person, if you're naturally a little bit uh, worried or paranoid, or if it's easy to scare you or freak you out or get you in any uh, negative motion easily, um, then I would urge caution for sure. And of course I would say make sure that you feel confident with your health and your state of mind. Okay, that's all that I'm going to say about that. Um, as far as my own personal experience, what I want to make sure of is that I um, don't fall into any what they call war stories where you're sharing crazy things that may or may not have happened um, while you're going through your different experiences. So some are very mild and it's not going to do much more than give you the slightest little bit of a tingling sensation that's going to help you get into a state of mind for say a form of astral travel or right before you go to sleep to perhaps help you with uh, lucid dreaming if you're working on that. Um, I have not tried working with any of those uh, flying ointments, actual flying ointments, for anything else. But I'll get into those more deeply when it's time to get into those. My prior experience, um, well, let's see. I did do several hits of acid in high school, uh, tripped with friends, probably four times I'm guessing. There again, did not ever have a negative experience. Um, you know, when I think about this, when I hesitate, it's because I always wonder, it's like a, what came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. Because my mind was already very open because of uh, other experiences I'd had in life prior to that. Um, that kind of forced me out of the box and forced me out of what was expected to be normal in life. So at this point in my life, it's hard to say when I talk about things like astral traveling, remote viewing, um, and this and that, doing things on the astral. It's hard for me to say, was that something that was really affected by me doing these various things or not. It's really hard for me to say. And I'm sure it's quite different from person to person and case by case. Um, beyond LSD, I have of not done ayahuasca. I have not smoked mother toads. DMT secretions, although I think I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, sorry, I didn't expect my phone to be going off. I'll check it in a minute. Um, I did do ecstasy back in the 80s when it very, very, like the month it was taken off the market as a pharmaceutical, so I had taken the actual pharmaceutical. Um, but I haven't done any of the whatever they have out there now since then, so it's been that long since the late 80s since I did that. It's been since the late 80s that I haven't uh, tripped on acid or anything like that since then. Back then in the 80s um, when I was going to school where I lived, it was pretty much a hot spot for acid, um, methamphetamine, of course, everybody smoked herb. I just, but that was it. There was nobody doing uh, anything like with needles or anything like that. Nobody that I knew in school, for sure. No, I don't think anybody did. But acid was going around that school like candy. No joke. But I only did it at school once. Anyway, I don't know if this is shocking to anybody. I really don't know how I'm. In, exactly perceived out there in uh, YouTube land. I don't know if I come across as uh, uptight or something, but I have had uh, experiences. I've had other experiences. I, I, I just want to be cautious about sharing too much because um, if you're talking to somebody that can relate, then it's cool, right? Like with ghost stories. 
But if you're talking to somebody that can't relate and it just like freaks them out or whatever, then you kind of hold back. So um, I just wanted to make this a little introduction video and I'm going to post other videos very soon. Um, I expect these to be very informative and uh, hopefully fun and I hope to hear feedback from people and uh, yeah I guess I'm gonna go ahead and end this one here I just wanted to kind of get this one together and say for all the future videos uh, whatever I may share of course always do your own research always take best care of yourself and your health and be cautious and uh, loving with yourself and if you do experiment even with the most mild say mugwort oil, make sure you have the time and the place set aside so that you can fully experience it and not be distracted, uh, not be interrupted, etc, etc, right? Okay y'all, I'm going to go ahead and end this one. I hope everybody's been having a good week and if you join me, I thank you very much and I wish you very many blessings and I will see you soon. Bye.